Yo, what is up guys? It's Saw DK here, and I got a lot of tutorial requests, and um, I'm going to be doing a couple. These tutorials have kind of just been bouncing back and forth in my head, and I've just been like, yeah man, I'm going to make this tutorial, man. It's going to happen, man. Okay. But um, today, I'm actually going to teach you guys how to do this. Not this specific clip. I'm going to show you guys something that's a little bit harder. You'll, get, you'll see the point. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to track a, uh, a logo or a text onto like this window right here. And I plan on having the sore logo there or somewhere in this space, but um, we'll see. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. And yeah, so you're gonna go ahead and make a new composition and then go to where you want the 3D to start. So for me, I want it to start like right here and from there to like right here. Maybe here at three seconds. So then you're gonna take this little thing, I forget what it's called, whatever, the render bar. Let's go ahead and call it that because Saw DK said so. And we're gonna go ahead and select it over the split part. And then we're going to composition, add to render queue. And this is very important. You're gonna save it as a JPEG. And I'll show you guys in a minute why. I'm not gonna save it on my desktop. I'm gonna save it right here under movies, hit save, render. And then you wait, but while you're waiting, go ahead and open up Buju. And yes, you're gonna need Buju, I'm sorry. So now that that's done rendering, you're gonna go to import sequence, your computer, wherever you saved it, and then, and then you're gonna go to the folder where you saved it, and then you're gonna open the first picture. So uh, you're gonna hit open. Now this is also very important. Where it says frame right here on Buju, you're gonna go to 59.4, hit apply, and then you're gonna go to 59.94 again, and then hit okay. And then you're gonna draw, now this is the tedious part, you're gonna go ahead and draw a mask over the gun with this add poly masks tool. Um, it might not be in the same place as your Buju as mine. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna go forward a little bit. I like to go like maybe, what is that, 10 frames ahead? Yeah. And I can't be bothered to track this whole thing and move it, but the more precise you are with this mask, the um, it's gonna be a lot more easy for you. And yeah, so right there, right there, right there. Eh, eh. And you're gonna go for a little bit. You guys know how this works. And uh, since this is very tedious, I know like all my tutorials are kind of like cut comms, but while you're doing this, go ahead and subscribe if you're not already. Check out my selfie and um, follow me on Twitter because I'm fucking awesome. I should probably swear less in these tutorials because they're educational videos. But anyone doing this is probably old enough to comprehend like all this stuff in here and if you're old enough to understand buju and all this other stuff then you probably say these words just as me so then you know just do this and remember the more precise you are the better results you're gonna get and sorry if you hear a little bit of thunder you might not i don't know but it's pretty much um thunderstorm season because it's been raining for like two months and it hasn't really stopped like it'll be sunny, but it'll go right back to being cloudy. You're gonna draw more masks over the things that you don't want tracked, you know, so it only captures the movement of of the person moving. Okay, so now that we have all that, and these crosshairs right here, they don't really matter. Uh, it's not gonna catch that, at least I don't think. So now that you have that, go ahead and click Track Features, and then go to Advanced. And um, the more precise you are with this, it's gonna take longer, but you're gonna get a lot more points. So hit start and you wait again and yeah this takes a while depending on what you're trying to you know do so then uh, when that's done you're gonna go to camera solve and then start and this is probably gonna take a lot less long I was gonna say a lot longer like I was prepared to say a lot longer but apparently not shit so um so now you have all these points and uh, this is gonna set, and it, it coincidentally tracked exactly where I wanted it to, so that's great. And um, I'm gonna set a point right here by this dead dude who's just chilling. You know, I'm dead. And then you're gonna go ahead and the points that you wanna track stuff on, or you, if you wanna just get some points for references, you right click on the point, and then you hit flag for export. And when I first did this, you gotta be really precise with the mouse, but I mean, it's just easier for me because I do this. I do this all the time. 
and uh, maybe I want some by the window so we're gonna do that and um, you know you want an Easter egg you might want to do something on the wall here Maybe some right there uh, maybe some above this so yeah so now that we have all of our points um, you're gonna want to go ahead and export camera and then you're gonna on the export type you hit after effects import flag tracks only and then scale scene by 1000 and then uh, you're gonna save it um, preferably in the same folder that you saved all the pictures because it can get a little confusing you know what I mean and w2 feed and then I'm gonna hit save I'm gonna go back to after effects and whoa scrapped edit spoiler alert and you're gonna go to your clip the composition there and then you're gonna go find wherever you saved it okay modified and then it's right here it should be a dot ma file so you drag that in here into your after effects and then you take that comp and you put it over um ooh, my phone's about to die and you put it over the clip uh right here and then snap it with the bracket the left bracket that rhymed and then go ahead and copy the clip that you split the one that you chose the track for and then you're gonna go into this composition and you're gonna paste it so I did a command C command V and uh, if you did the and if you did everything right then it should be 60 frames all this stuff should be good and then you have all your points here you know and if they might be a little off like see these these are oh, okay, I see. These are kind of a little bit off, so I'm going to go to composition settings and then change it to 59.94, and then they're all good, so go ahead and drag the clip here. So now, let's see here, what do I want to track? Let's go ahead and put something right there, so you got your X, Y, and your Z. If you passed your math class, you're not a dumbass, you know exactly what that is. Um, and then you make a new solid, and then you're going to need, of course, element 3D. Unless you're trying to put some text, you know, you might want to do that on the wall. You don't need element 3D for that. I should have put a, something right there. Damn. All right, whatever. Anyways, um, so you're going to go ahead and go into the scene setup. Now, I have a sore logo that's already made from Cinema 4D, but you could probably figure out how to... Whoa! Just change the scale. You could probably figure out how to make um, a logo a lot uh, like that with just the 2D image. Um, there's tutorials on that um, So then you know you're gonna want to press ok and I'm not gonna do anything too uh, Dicey with this yet. I'm just gonna get it where I need it to be So you're gonna go into the first group because that's where it normally saves it And you're gonna copy the Z the Y and the X So it's exactly where you need to be and you know you can position it how you want maybe make it a little bit whoa a little bit bigger change the rotation and this is just gonna be a quick thing on how I do the curve text because I'm gonna do that right now uh, if you have element 3d v2 you can do this deform uh, bend enable and then just mess with uh, the X and Y and don't fuck with that because that just gets really confusing you can do some cool some cool looking stuff like that yeah maybe bring it a little bit closer so that looks good and you know you want to um, maybe you want to animate it you know press I'm, I just pressed you to do that maybe move this a little bit down to the left so we got it like that and easy ease everything so it looks smooth and dandy so that's how you do it now I mean this is pretty much just element 3d fun times you know what I'm saying yeah uh, scene setup I got the pro shaders too because I'm a beast and uh, since this is um high-rise I might do like something concrete maybe some a little bit dark like that oh oh yeah and if you make some on cinema 4d and the material looks weird that's because your UV mapping is on UV you want to set that to box so that looks all dandy um, ground let's see what we got on the ground textures that looks nice posture metals so there's a lot you can do with it um, that's basically hey that looks nice normally I like to do like a clean metal 
but uh, you know this looks pretty nice um, there's a lot of lighting settings you might want to change when it comes to this um, oh yeah while you're doing this you want to set a shadow so go ahead and create a new plane um, if you have element 3d version 1 that's probably gonna be over here on your models folders and stuff change that to 2 do that so then your planes right there I'm gonna go to group two particle look I've done a tutorial on this you guys know the drill y'all know the drill oh no there we go and uh, I might move the logo down a bit not that far down and then um, you're gonna maybe rotate the plane because it looks a little bit I don't know looks a little bit weird so I'm just gonna rotate it slightly here. There we go. Oh. And then uh, the render settings, ambient occlusion, turn on AO, and only set this to 15, maybe a little bit more. Let's go 25. And then uh, set the the multi or set the samples to pretty damn high. That's what I like to do. And then um. You can just mess around with it. So, uh, and if you don't want the ground to show up, just go in your um, materials, and it's this matte shadow one. So, bam, it's not showing up. That look good. That might be back a little bit too far. There we go. That looks about good. Maybe move it down. You know, just so it looks super swag. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that's basically what I do. Um, there's a lot more, of course, you can do with this and a lot more things that you can do to make it look more realistic. I'm just doing a quick tutorial on um, this just so you guys can basically see what I do. And you know, of course, you got to consider lightning and all, lightning, what? You got to consider lighting and all that. So I mean, you can add a bunch of lights and do some other crazy stuff with it. So, um, yeah, you know, and I got an unsharpened preset that I normally like to use. It just adds a little bit more depth. Um, I'm not really liking that material at all. It looks a little bit more clean. I don't know. There's a lot more you can do with it. Um, I'm just here to show you guys the basic thing. That's what I did for my Obey RC. This is We Play You Edit. It's going to come out really fucking late because I'm working on a saw episode. And I've kind of been on break if you haven't noticed. But, um, yeah, so uh, hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Um, there's going to be more to come. Follow me on Twitter. I post, I'm not really that active on YouTube, but when I'm not, I normally post updates on Twitter, so you guys know why, you guys know what's up. Um, so uh, follow me on Twitter, um, all that stuff. I post updates on Twitter. And um, yeah, I guess that's the end of the tutorial. Anything else you guys want to know from my Obey RC or whatever, just comment below. And um, summer's starting, so there's going to be a lot more stuff coming on. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more real life tutorials, things like with photography and film and uh, photo editing. I'm a very avid photographer. So, um, yeah. Thanks.